wave propagation solutions and applications using Altair, Winthrop, and RAC. There are two tools I guess that we're going to cover uh, today. Um, just for the sake of um, continuity, last week we talked about advances in electromagnetic solutions using Altair Pico. And of course, the recording is now available. Actually, it is now posted on Altair University for the educated version of it at this um, uh, link. Um, as before, I think we're going to share these slides with the attendees, so you can um, go to this link if you missed the last week's uh, uh, presentation on 18. Because today we'll focus on real propagation. <clears throat> so, as a broader um, picture of you know Altair portfolio, in the FICO side we have um, for FICO, and also we have a tool called NewFasant that is the um, similar to FICO but with some com some um, what I call complementary capabilities. We talked about that last week. Of course, the propagation side, we have the tools, Winthrop and Graph. And of course, this is not really in our, um, uh, the, the portfolio we're going to talk about, but Pollux is a PCB analysis tool. On the electromagnetic side, uh, Pollux can do signal integrity, power integrity, EMI, EMC, and of course, various uh, design checks for electrical and assembly and manufacturing and so on and so forth. And today, of course, we will focus on this part, the wind prop and wrap. And um, as I mentioned the last week uh, as well, we have one uh, installation for all the tools, except Polix. Polix is a separate tool and separately installed. But for uh, FICO, wind prop, new facant, and wrap, um, we have one installation file. When you install FICO, for example, now the latest version, all these tools are by default installed. And of course, they can be launched from the launch bar, as I'm showing, but also under documentation, you can find the user manuals and help menu, and as well as the wrap, I guess, here. So it's all in one place, so you don't have to have multiple installations on your uh, computer. So let's go to, I'll give a brief introduction to Winthrop and wrap, and then we'll go into a little bit more details of the capabilities of uh, each tool. So Winthrop, essentially a wave propagation tool, but also it's a radio network planning tool. What that means is that after the radio propagation, the wave propagation analysis is done, we can actually use the air interfaces for the communication protocols, such as Wi-Fi or 4G or even for 5G, for example. Then you can compute the bitter rates, data rates, so channel capacity, even MIMO calculations and so on and so forth to compute your uh, channel capacity. So the Winthrop can um, take into account the indoor scenario, that is buildings and multiple floors and uh, those kind of things. Urban scenarios, that is with the downtown, with a um, lot of buildings as well as uh, uh, topography and those kind of things, as well as rural and suburban scenarios uh, with the clutter as well. Um, so there are three types of solvers that Winthrop uses. One, of course, in the bottom, what we call empirical methods. These are the langley rice method and um, those kind of things which can solve in no time. But of course, they're empirical methods, so there could be inaccuracies and all those things. But of course, more accurate ones uh, are the ray tracing solutions. This is where ray tracing is used. So we have you know, different ways, ways of doing ray tracing, what we call standard ray tracing that takes into account all the rays and so on and so forth. Then we have what's called intelligent ray tracing. That is where you do the ray tracing once and keep the data for future ray tracing analysis so that you are not repeating those things. Then more importantly, we have something called dominant path model. What this means is that because when you use the ray tracing, you normally make sure the rays, you know, all the rays may not have the uh, the power that uh, need to be there. So for example, only 10% of the rays may carry most of the power, and rest of the 90% of the rays may carry very little power or less power. So instead of using all the 100% of the rays, we just use the 10% of the rays, do the calculations. In many, many cases, I think that seems to be very, very fast, but at the same time, accurate enough for your uh, calculation. So kind of in between, you know, full ray tracing and empirical methods, one can use dominant path model as well in uh, wind prop. So in terms of key applications wise, 
you can see that you know you can do the outdoor and indoor and those kind of things um uh, as well as you know both combinations as well we'll talk a little bit about that one later on and you can optimize the radio network we can also do virtual flight tests and also virtual drive tests which i'll talk about that in terms of the automotive applications wise where you can actually uh, put your flight path and then see how the um how the connectivity with the ground station is uh, um is affected because you can also do multiple um uh, communication protocols in a, let's say in a factory type of a environment where you have multiple wireless systems and their interference between them and of course the safety you know how much electromagnetic energy is there in one place that could create uh, safety issues for the human exposure and those kind of things you can set the limit and see where you are crossing the limit and so on and so forth um so coming to wrap this is also a propagation tool but of course with a large scale uh, radar and radio coverage that is you know if you can think of wind prop you can take uh, big cities and uh, uh, larger areas wind prop you can take uh, let's say a province or even the country uh, into account and do the propagation study um it also can be used for spectrum management and monitoring co location interference of various radio stations or radar stations and satellite communications as well so main applications obviously wireless coverage um in terms of let's say am fm radios or broadcast stations your normal military communications or civilian communications um and then radar coverage <coughs> various radar applications um i'll also talk about that one little bit later on in more detail satellite communications um and of course co location co site interference i think some of the charts i have shown last week also shows how we can use rap for a co site interference on an aircraft for example or on a ship for example where you not only take into account the coupling the parameters but also you take into account the uh, uh, the uh, modulation products and those kind of things and harmonic interferences and so on so forth and of course spectrum management you can assign frequencies for various uh, operations and then see if they are going to be uh, interfering with each other in your operation um so if you can think of broader picture wise um seco can be used for very detailed geometries like we're showing here and of course for larger scenarios wireless communications in buildings and cities wind prop can be used and of course the la- even larger ones i call it enormous areas uh you can use the rap so you can think of you know you're going in a, um, a step by step in terms of the resolution wise you want higher resolution you have to use pico obviously that's going to be taking computation resources then a little bit less res- resolution but to larger areas wind prop but of course even losing more resolution but of course going in a big, bigger um area coverage that would be rap so how do they fit in a communication system design for example you have a mobile device and you could design an antenna and compute the radiation pattern of course you can also design the base station and its um, radiation patterns <laughs> then you can use them in a urban environment for example here and this could be the base station and the coverage we are seeing here could be the mobile station or mobile device going around so it could be the power distribution or you can also add a mobile device to see what is the connectivity between the base station and uh, the mobile device and of course uh, you can also the indoor let's say you have a wifi router and you can do an indoor um, uh, wifi access uh, optimization or a wifi access coverage inside an office building or of course in your home and uh, so on and so forth so this part will be alter pico and this part would be uh, wind prop so essentially you're starting from the device level and then going to higher level and then of course doing the uh, in a way complete communication um uh, capacity data capacity and those kind of things which is actually critical because I, I can get a radiation pattern like this one but i don't know whether it's a good pattern or bad pattern unless i know it can connect well to my uh, base station or connect well to my wifi router so that's what i think um, the whole portfolio of pico wind prop was rapidly later on can bring to the table um So the other one is virtual flight test scenario for example you have a blade antenna and you can design that in pico 
Um, of course, it looks nice pattern here, because you can put that on a helicopter, for example, or any platform, um, and you can see that radiation pattern changes. Is it a good radiation pattern or bad radiation pattern? Uh, obviously, we like to have such a nice uh, omni pattern. Um, we don't have the luxury of having that on a platform. So that's where you know you can do, for example, a virtual flight test. And see there's a base station here, and there is a um, flight path. And you can see the connectivity of the power, for example, uh, here. Once it comes behind this uh, building, you can see the power dropping off and again picking up. So that's what actually can um, tell you whether this radiation pattern is good enough for a flight um, in terms of the connectivity wise. Again, here we can use Pico for uh, the antenna design and antenna placement. And of course, Windprop for the uh, uh, propagation and the network uh, planning type of calculation. Um, so now let's go more detail into different uh, capabilities we have for Windprop and um, uh, RAP. Uh, so propagation models for various scenarios in prop, this urban scenario, as we already talked about, you can actually take multiple buildings as we're seeing here, but also the terrain and the, and the topology, you know, vegetation and those kind of things you can consider. And if there is a base station, this is kind of showing you the power distribution around the uh, city. Um, of course, you can also take a rural area. That's where, you know, you don't have any buildings, but there's a vast uh, spread of the ground and the mountains and vegetation and so on and so forth. And also it can take into account the tunnels where you can have propagation, either it could be metro trains or it could be mining tunnels. We can do the analysis um, there. Then of course, indoor with multi-story buildings and each story level, you can actually compute the uh, the power distribution as well as connectivity. As we were saying before, you can have you know the Wi-Fi access points and so on and so forth, and how to make sure that you have enough Wi-Fi access points, not too many, not too little, to get the coverage in a building. Uh, of course, there's another unique capability that we have is combination of the scenarios. That is, you can have one building with um, all the details inside the building but also the outside building. So this can actually can tell you uh, from outside to inside, if you have a base station outside, uh, how much coverage you can get inside the building. And also if you need any repeaters inside the building, sometimes people use the repeaters to enhance the signal inside the building. And those kind of studies can also be done. This last one I'm showing, this is kind of, um, uh, you can say, um, uh, what we call time variant uh, simulations. You can actually have multiple objects and so they are moving at a particular speed. And this is actually used for the ADAS simulation, that is our, um, advanced driver assistance systems and cars and other kind of things. So you can have let's say, the bridge and those kind of things and see. We'll talk also more about it in terms of not only the ADAS, but also let's say vehicle to vehicle communication uh, scenarios how we can model that in um, in uh, Winthrop. So coming to the network design, uh, we already have within uh, within Winthrop various built-in protocols, like for example, 5G, LTE, UMTS, CSM, I know maybe people are not using it nowadays, Wi-Fi protocols, IoT protocols, uh, for example, LoRa and those kind of things. And of course, safety uh, once and the broadcast and of course, we can also do the coexistence of uh, um, various uh, uh, wireless systems. So, um, how do we do this in um, various scenarios? For example, rural propagation, we can take the topography and the pixel data and be able to map that in uh, WinProp. Um, urban propagation, we can take 2.5D building vector data. We can actually build the buildings. Once you have, let's say, a map, we can actually build various three-dimensional buildings within uh, WinProp using our tool called Wallman, the Wall Manager. And of course, for the indoor, we can actually can take 3D vector data. Also, we can take, let's say, a building plan, and of course, build the walls and things like that and assign the properties there. Even here in Urban, we can assign properties to the building walls and so on and so forth. Uh, optionally, you can add the clutter losses, heights, and ground properties. Of course, in this case, um, urban propagation case, 
you can add material properties, topographical pixel data, vegetation, etc. And uh, indoor propagation, you can have material properties of let's say furniture and other kind of things. We actually have a material database that can assign, uh, let's say, if you say this is furniture, that um, a specific uh, prop electromagnetic properties are assigned, material properties are assigned. And also, you know, in terms of propagation models wise, uh, in rural propagation, um, um, Hakumura Hata, I guess, and ITU models are available. And of course, we can do dominant path model that we talked about before, and 3D standard ray tracing. And uh, similarly, here in the urban, we can do what's called vert vertical plane model, somewhat of an empirical, and of course, dominant path model, and so on and so forth. Of course, in the other case, in the indoor, we have uh, direct ray models like multi wall, you know, attenuation and those kind of things. I think there's a class 231 or so and so models, I guess. And then dominant path model, 3D ray tracing, both the standard ray tracing and intelligent ray tracing as well. So coming to urban scenarios, as we mentioned, you know, we can take the map. Um, um, though I have not mentioned in my presentation here, you can take maps from let's say open street maps and you can export part of the city and uh, put that into um, Windprop. And of course, from the street map, you can actually build the buildings because various uh, shapes are available within Windprop. You can say, I want to use particular shape and so much height and assign the material properties to it. Um, and of course, if you have 3D building data, you can bring all of them into uh, Windprop and be able to uh, analyze them within uh, Windprop as we're showing here. So in terms of propagation wise, Let's say you have a transmitter here and receiver here. We can take multiple propagation paths, not only the direct one, but also the indirect one that are reflecting off of the buildings uh, here and then receiving here. Um, of course, uh, different delays and attenuation, shadowing effects, reflection, diffraction, scattering, uh, etc. Destructive and constructive interference. Of course, we can also, depending on the frequency, and of course, the frequency range that is valid. When prop is 100 megahertz to 300 gigahertz, that means it covers all of the communication systems that we can talk about. I think it can go even lower than this because we do cover the AM, FM radio stations as well. And um, going to 300 gigahertz, now we can cover the 5G bands all the way to 26 gigahertz, but also the uh, ADAS, autonomous car driving type of things, which can go to 77 gigahertz, even higher, I guess, even if you have Thinking of 6G, that's possible as well because we can go all the way to 300 gigahertz uh, range. So this is an example of, you know, in a street map, you have a um, uh, transmitter here. If you just take the direct way, this is a street where you can see the wave propagating on both sides. But if you take a single reflection, see that so there's a little bit of uh, leakage that's happening. Double reflection, you can see a little bit more. But once you go to diffraction, you can see that it lifts up uh, most of the streets a little bit better, which is then showing that with uh, uh, with the diffraction effect taken into account, you can actually compute some of the uh, uh, connectivity things more accurately than not taking that into account. Um, so typically, you know, if you go above six gigahertz, there's a transmission and you know, other penetration through walls is a little bit difficult. Uh, line of sight or out of line of sight regions are also dominate. <clears throat> Reflection can be taken into account. Diffraction, it could become less and less significant. But what could become more significant is the roughness of that. So that is taken into account what um, is called diffuse scattering that is also included in wind prop uh, calculation. Of uh, course, this is a, a problem with the 5G transmission. Uh, one uses the highly directive antennas on both ends of the um, uh, communication link. And one of the things we can do in um, with between FICO and Windprop is that we can compute all the radiation patterns in uh, FICO and we could import them into Windprop for calculations, both on the transmission side, transmitter side, but also on the receiver side. Um, coming to indoor scenarios, as I mentioned, you can actually take a drawing of your building plan and you can build your walls uh, based on that one using uh, the tool we have wallman uh, our wall manager in um, in winprop so once it is done you know we can
put your um, various transmitters and Wi-Fi access points, and you can actually compute the power, but also you can compute the, um, uh, if you have a uh, receiver, like you know your mobile station, mobile uh, phone, you can compute the um, connectivity between them, uh, as well as with MIMO, you know, you can do two by two MIMO or four by four MIMO to see the data rate improvement because of that. So this is an example of you know placing various uh, transmitters because this is various floor size of this building, how the these access points are radiating or propagating within those uh, different floors. <clears throat> then of course, that's within the building. As we mentioned before, we can also do um, uh, a building in the presence of the um, uh, of the city, other buildings. Then we can compute the um, connectivity inside. So this could be, you know, uh, we can do detailed indoor analysis uh, based on what's uh, coming from outside. Uh, but also, do we need any repeaters or there's any interference between the indoor cells? Maybe you have Wi-Fi, but at the same time, the cell phone signals and those kind of things, you could uh, compute to those kind of uh, things uh, with the heterogeneous network planning. Rural scenario, similar uh, uh, thing here. Uh, you have a transmitter here, and you can see with various topography how the, the power distribution on it. Field strength distribution is there. Typically, you know, rural scenarios are used for broadcast analysis where you have various broadcast stations and how they are radiating within that area. Of course, you can also add uh, suburban areas and buildings to see whether they are receiving any transmissions. For example, in this case, the digital audio uh, broadcast transmission. Um, with a rural area, you can also, of course, we have seen the in the, in the previous slides how the flight test can be done in an urban area in a downtown. That's also possible in a rural area where you can uh, um, kind of do the ER pitch and roll. What happens is that if you computed the radiation pattern on the aircraft with, uh, uh, with the aircraft in presence, let's say in uh, ECO, and you bring that into a wind prop and specify your um, flight path. And um, uh, based on this ER pitch and roll, the radiation pattern can you know, uh, rotate or uh, uh, accordingly orient uh, to get connected to the ground uh, spaces. Coming to tunnel scenarios and mining scenarios, as we mentioned, you know, we have what's called Suman, which is a tunnel manager. And then of course we have Wallman, which is a wall manager, and Proman, which is a propagation manager. These are the different tools that we use in uh, Winprop. Um, you can think of, you know, that in FICO context, at FICO, that is a two-man, uh, of course, this is a special tool for uh, tunnels. Of course, Wallman is kind of related to something similar to CAD FICO, and ProMan is where you do the analysis. And of course, also look at the results and those kind of things. So the tunnel manager is a specific tool to build your tunnel. There are specific uh, um, features are there where you can easily build a single tunnel or multiple tunnels. In this case, let's say this is a metro station uh, here, and then of course your metro routes going around um, uh, in various directions here. So this can be defined in um, uh, two men. And of course in the wall man, you can actually put a train as a, an object and assign material properties and other kind of things there. And of course in pro man, you can do the, uh, you can add um, uh, you know transmitters and things like that and see the propagation and set the propagation and look at the propagation studies. So in this case, you know, this is the train station. And if you have an LP um, uh, antenna here and another one here, this shows the the, uh, uh, the power propagation there. And of course, that's a safety radio. Again, it shows the similar different frequencies, I guess, Wi-Fi and its propagation there. But then, of course, you can take from the station to the tunnels and their propagation uh, analysis within the tunnel can also be computed, obviously, for the three different um, why the communication protocols. And uh, there you can see also, you know, within the station, let's say your coverage is minus 95 dBm, is 100% for Wi-Fi uh, or LTE service, um, et cetera, could be, you know, that's also 100%. Wi-Fi seems to be with minus 75 dBm, 99%. The tunnel it comes down because 
it has to go. But sometimes, you know, some of these things we use what's called uh, leaky feeder cables. This is like a leaky wave antenna, I guess, in a way. And uh, um, Winthrop can take that also into account. You can say, I'm, I'm putting a feeder cable here, leaky feeder cable here, and what would be radiation from those uh, feeder cables and so on and so forth. Um, same thing can be done in um, uh, panels, and they can analyze uh, you know, panel propagation and for the mines, and you can actually have the mining configuration. This is actually very critical, I understand, from the mining point of view, because uh, people are going in there, and communication is key for them to um, uh, make sure that they're all safe and, uh, um, and communicating to the outside world. So in industrial scenarios, uh, the IoT is, of course, obviously becoming more prominent nowadays. Um, uh, some of the protocols that are used, LoRa, um, long range, of course, low power WAN, and so on and so forth. So Winthrop can take these things, these things into account, those protocols into account, and you can have it's a multiple sensors in various places in an industrial scenario where you want to monitor them at a one place. and. Um, uh, using some of these protocols, I guess, Zigbee or LoRa, we can actually incorporate them to see the data rates and so on and so forth. Of course, we can always compute the power distribution, but of course, we can also add the air interfaces to compute the data rate so that we have enough distance or if there any uh, problem in connecting to those sensors, collecting the data and so on and so forth. In addition to that, we can also do uh, satellite uh, uh, analysis and in terms of visibility by a satellite, you know, because uh, this is a uh, kind of an animation that we're showing. But you can pick a transmitter up in the sky and then uh, see how much the coverage is there on the ground. Same thing can also be done for aircrafts and other kind of things. At the same time, we can also compute the satellite to indoor radio coverage. Uh, this is inside the building, whether you can get any satellite communications or not. Um, one last one, of course, is the um, um, uh, jamming of the uh, mobile and so this will come to interference, right? So you have um, um, uh, cell phone signals and things, so in some places, you know, they would like to jam, for example, in a prison, for example, they don't want uh, the inmates to communicating through cell phones. I was told they use jammers. This was actually some kind of a project, I think, our people have done on how to implement the jammers so that the um, and the communications cannot happen within the building and so on and so forth. Um, coming to 5G solutions, this is of course something new in uh, uh, Winthrop. Last couple of years uh, we implemented this because of the 5G prominence of the 5G is that um, there are two ways of uh, 5G communication happens. Uh, is that One is uh, what we call envelope beam pattern because it's a focused beam, but you can take the envelope of the various beams and can compute the propagation studies of connectivity. This can be used, for example, in a static traffic uh, uh, scenario. But of course, you can also do multiple uh, beeps that are connecting to multiple devices. Um, for example, in this case, we have various transmitters and of course, the different type of users. Um, and of course, the challenge in this scenario is that how many beams you need to have and how many transmitters to connect to all these devices. Obviously, there is no deterministic way of doing it because we have the, this could be 5,000 people or 10,000 people or even 100,000 people in a stadium um, kind of environment. So we can do a Monte Carlo simulation to see whether we get 100% coverage connecting all of them, which may or may not be needed, or we can get 80% or 90%, so on and so forth. So all those things are included in the wind prop uh, calculations there. And the other one, which uh, I, I also trying to yeah. learn a little bit more about, is um, 5G air interface. Um, in the past, it looks like there was only mu naught, uh, mu equals zero. This is what's called numerology in 5G, is that uh, this is what was used before, and of course, with a very little uh, um, a time slot or the frequency slot, you could only have so much of bandwidth. Uh, but of course, in um, 5G, they introduced numerology one and two and three, where the bandwidth and um, the slot width and the bandwidth can change. This is the bandwidth. 20 megahertz was for LTE, for example. 
of course, you use 50 megahertz. Then you can use um, 100 megahertz, and of course, you can use even wider um, uh, slot, I guess, the sub slots, I guess, within the bandwidth. So you can have much more uh, higher data rates than what you would have before, let's say, this 30.7 mega samples per second. This is 122 mega samples per second, so on and so forth. So this is also available, so you can choose which numerology you want to use, and then accordingly can do your calculation. Um, this is the, uh, what we call CV2X. We all know what is V2X, that is vehicle to everything connectivity. CV2X is cellular to uh, cellular to vehicle to connectivity there. Um, so typically, you know, V2X uh, is to be between direct connection between the vehicles and of course pedestrians and so on and so forth. CV2X is where uh, everything connects the cellular network and they connect back into your car. Uh, so one advantage is that this car, if it has to communicate between these two, it has to be very close proximity. They were using what's called short range uh, uh, digital uh, uh, communication. Um, but you know, in the C2, CV2X, uh, the distance doesn't matter. It could be one mile apart still, there may be some communication between them. So direct V2X, we can actually simulate in uh, uh, Winthrop using what we call time variant scenario, like these ones. Actually, you can set the speed and things like that. These are actual ways that are calculated, and uh, these uh, uh, colors indicate the strength of those rays. Same thing, you know, has a, a intersection here, and you can compute uh, those for calculations as well. Also, line of sight and low, no, no line of sight calculations. For example, there's a car here and then taking a turn. Um, you can see that um, this red is mean, red means in this case is an opposite one. I guess you've got a good connectivity, less connectivity here and a little bit more connectivity, a little bit more connectivity here. You can see through ray tracing how, how this connectivity happens um, there, I guess. It's going below sensitivity where you have the direct, uh, somewhat of a multiple path, but direct uh, connection to the other car, you're able to connect well, uh, even in this case, for example. Uh, so those kind of calculations can be done. In CV2X, um, we can actually compute, obviously we can compute the radiation patterns of the LTU antenna on the car, as well as base station, and we can put them in the um, urban scenario. And of course, this is uh, using FICO, you can compute these things, and used as was, as was mentioned before. Uh, so if you have a base station, this kind of gives you the propagation or uh, the field strength around it, but you can also specify a particular trajectory and then say my car is traveling in this uh, path and give me the connectivity or the power of the car connectivity because you also have an antenna and its radiation pattern as well as the radiation pattern of the, uh, uh, the base station. So actually this can be uh, done in a, what we call a virtual drive test. Uh, let's see if it will work. If I click on it, you'll see that there's a car here with an antenna. This is, of course, without the base station. You can see the antenna radiates, and we got a good coverage here. Because of the buildings, you see these um, uh, shadows. And I would, when I click on this one, it will drive, this car will drive along this road and then go all the way here and then stop here. You'll see the shadows varying because of that. Um, let me show you this. So this kind of shows you know, what's really driving the car. And this can be very useful in the design of uh, the car communication systems and cars before they actually build the prototype and put it in uh, and do a real um, uh, real time um, uh, drive test in a real environment. One advantage of this one is that you're not restricted to one city or one place. You can take any city in the world and we can simulate this to make sure that uh, the systems are working well uh, in that scenario. Uh, then, of course, we're coming to ADAS. Um, I don't want to go into the too much details. There are various uh, systems in our car already that uh, take into account the radar, different type of radar. We take one of them, I think medium range radar, some of the specifications are given here. We can certainly design the antenna in uh, FICO. We can also put that in the behind the bumper and compute the radiation patterns and all those things. To do the virtual um, drive test for the ADAS sensors, because we also have the radars in uh, ADAS work with the FMCW 
principle that is frequency modulated continuous wave radar, where you know you send a uh, you change the frequency in a triangular fashion like this one here with the time, and then the return signal will have this green one here with a little bit delayed. So this delay can be the distance between um, the, your car and the car in front of you. And of course, if you can also compute the Doppler shift. Uh, because of the moment, you can also know the velocity of that car. So this can be simulated in uh, wind prop, for example. Uh, this is a Doppler shift uh, that is uh, varying in real time as we have this scenario here. And of course, one can identify which one of which is this uh, moving Doppler shift is um, um, representing. Similarly, with a bridge and those kind of things, uh, this is actually critical because sometimes the uh, ADAS systems and confuse the bridge with a bigger uh, vehicle and those kind of things. So it's good to distinguish between a bridge and a vehicle in front of you. We also implemented FMCW uh, protocol you can think of within uh, Winthrop. So you can actually see in a heat map the range versus uh, relative velocity of various uh, objects in front of you. For example, this car is represented here. This uh, uh, truck is represented here. The guard rail also is represented, as well as, of course, the car here, um, or in front of the car, I guess. Then. So this can be very useful in doing some of the uh, read uh, during the design, some of the tests for the people who are making the radar, but also people who are integrating the radar into the car. So WinProp comes with an API, so you can actually um, use the WinProp with your own uh, planning tools if you have a different way of doing things. So you can take advantage of the propagation models, uh, ray tracing models, so for example, we already have in WinSwap. Uh, I'll quickly go through the RAP. Of course, we talked about this one before. Um, one of the key things in RAP is that RAP supports all the ITU protocols, uh, most of the ITU protocols we have. Uh, and of course, you can, you can bring your own protocols through um, uh, external libraries. We also have high frequency planning tool from a public source called ITS HF software. This is a US based one. So it's IT, uh, ITS is a US based one. IT is an international one. So we have all of those. Uh, also, you can see that we also have Langley Rice here, uh, Okumara Hata model. These are the empirical models as well. Um, <clears throat> it can take into account the long term effects, for example, troposphere scattering and uh, various other objects in the on the ground, but also the short term ones by using some of the ITU models in terms of there's a rain or um, some other scattering from the clouds and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of radio coverage, we can put various uh, stations, these are FM stations, I guess, and the green and green means very good coverage um, and um, uh, medium coverage is yellow and red means there's a bit of a less coverage and so it gives you the map of what what is good and what is bad and so on and so forth. You can also compare between various uh, coverages. Um, another good thing about uh, RAP uh, interface is that you can actually take a look at the uh, uh, profile view of your uh, uh, simulation area. So you have your where the transmitter is located and receiver is located. You can look at all the uh, different signal zone and of course. Uh, different areas of that and reflections that are coming off of the ground and so on and so forth. Uh, RAP also includes a, a, a good amount of equipment database, various types of transmitters, receivers, antennas, filters, so on and so forth. Of course, you can bring your own, and with respect to antennas, you can bring uh, from FICO uh, some of the simulations you have done. One difference is that you know when you get uh, these kind of antennas from manufacturers, the antenna radiation patterns, they are mostly ideal radiation patterns. That means they're not put in a vehicle or anything like that. But when it comes to from FICO, you can actually do uh, on vehicle or on the uh, platform or uh, on a on a base station um, uh, environment, I guess, and they can bring those radiation patterns into RAP as well. So what this allows you to do is that uh, various you know uh, IF attenuation and uh, Intermodulation attenuation and so on and so forth. You can put those things in there as a database that can be used in the interference calculation. 
other uh, utility that we have in RAP is the cost and coverage optimizer. So you want to put so many stations, but at the same time, we don't want to exceed the budget and so on and so forth. So it can give you, it can optimize the coverage, but at the same time, uh, for your cost settings. Radar coverage-wise, um, uh, this actually, if you're if you're using this for detecting uh, coming in um, aircrafts and those kind of things, this actually shows that the green means uh, you should have 100 meters per radar cross section. Yellow means we should have 10 meters. I'm sorry, the other way around, I guess. Um, yeah, this is 100 meters square. That means we should have a large object. Then you can uh, detect in this region. Uh, then 10 meters square, of course, one meter square is very, very small when it comes very, very small. So it can give you that kind of um, uh, what I call a distinction, I guess, between various RCS values uh, of your objects. And so you can see how your radar performance ahead of time. Uh, spectrum management and monitoring, this is also another um, uh, uh, utility that we have that, of course, Winthrop does not have this kind of tool. We have co location interference where you have multiple transmitters and receivers. You can do intermodulation, IF breakthrough, and so on and so forth in terms of uh, interference well. That gives the ability to do frequency assignment so that uh, you're not interfering with different type of different assignments of frequencies. Of course, we also have a spectrum viewer. You have various uh, um, uh, radio stations or TV stations uh, on a map. And you assign those frequencies, and we have what is called a spectrum monitor utility. Um, I was told, you know, this is actually can also be connected to real time spectrum monitoring. For example, Rodent Swartz or other companies that make spectrum monitoring and equipment, we can actually interface with that to look at the spectrum and also assign assess the interference between those uh, uh, various radio stations or the various uh, frequencies. You can also allocate frequencies because of the capability. This is mainly used in, let's say, this is an example of a military unit deployed somewhere, and you can actually assign various frequencies for various vehicles or the radios and those kind of things, make sure that they don't interfere with themselves, but also they don't interfere with uh, external or you know, wherever they are, I guess, whichever country they are in, they don't interfere with uh, those other systems as well. Similar to what I mentioned here, cost and coverage optimizer, let's say you're placing various radar sites in an area. And you can actually, not only you can specify the cost and how much uh, uh, you want to spend, but also you can say, I don't want to put my radar in a water, for example, or in a swamp, or um, you can specify the forbidden areas so that it can accordingly optimize your thing. <laughs> Almost we have come to the end here. Uh, the uh, satellite communications wise, uh, we can not only do the uh, direct link from Earth to satellite, but also satellite to satellite, uh, but also satellite to back to Earth. And the interference between uh, either uh, these two Earth stations or if there are more stations, more transmitters here, interference there as well as between these two. Or if you have this one interfering with this one versus this one interfering with this one. And there is also a coverage uh, analysis that you can do of various satellites. And um, 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 of course, I'm not very familiar with it myself, but there's also time dynamic analysis of the satellite. So as the satellites move across the Earth, we can also compute the coverage as they move across the satellite, uh, across the Earth as well. So this actually, very, I would say we're just scratching the surface of various capabilities, both Winthrop and uh, RAP has. So to conclude, I guess, you know, to give you, again, the remind you that uh, very detailed uh, structures, we can use SICO, larger scenarios, including indoor and those kind of things, you can use uh, um, uh, Winthrop for larger areas. Here, we're not talking about, you know, uh, uh, the indoor scenarios or anything like that, uh, just a broader map. Uh, no buildings and no urban areas and those kind of things. We can actually use the uh, RAP. Um, you can think of it as you know, you're flying. This may be flying at a lower height, a bit higher, you know, maybe 1,000 feet, something like that. This may be 10,000 or higher feet. So the your area you're covering 
uh, gets bigger and bigger as you go through these um, various uh, things. Um, as I mentioned in last uh, um, uh, talk as well, um, we have a Pico student edition that's freely available that includes not only Pico, but also Winprop. We're not at added wrap to it, but it's available. Well, of course, we can play around with Winprop. I guess we have these two available as a, under the alteruniversity.com slash Pico student edition. And we also have uh, uh, free eBooks. So these are actually tutorials you can think of giving you a little bit background of uh, the um, the software, but also giving you uh, uh, links to the tutorials in the PDF copy where you can click on a tutorial and come through the video and you can watch and learn uh, both for Pico as well as Winpro. Um, so with that, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and you can reach out to me or RS, who is your local uh, uh, senior sales director in Montreal. And of course, I am based in um, Hampton, Virginia.